Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Uh, the meeting is called to order. Would you please stand, please? Invocation. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're glad to be in your uh, presence tonight and to do your work for the county. Just guide us and direct us in that activity, Lord, and let us need, leave nothing undone. And be with us and bless us for your service. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge to the flag of our great country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Join me in the pledge to Texas. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Do we have any special presentations tonight? No, sir. Okay. Um, the I believe we have one for our uh, we have one for the uh, proclamation for the American Red Cross. Is that not right, yes, sir. Richard? Welcome. Let's uh, hold on a minute. Let's see if I can find it up here. All right. Um, do you want to read it, or do you want me to? Okay. Uh, the American Red Cross has touched many lives in the Chisholm Trail chapter area, which includes Tarrant, Johnson, Parker, Hood, Wise, and Wise counties, as well as across the country and around the world. During the Red Cross month, we thank those who have contributed to the mission of the Red Cross, whether through time, money, blo or blood, and we invite others to support the Red Cross and helping people in need down the street, or across the country, and around the world. The American Red Cross is uh, uh, synonymous with helping people. It has been doing so for more than 130 years. Throughout the past year, the American Red Cross launched, hun launched hundreds of disaster relief operations in the United States to help people affected by fires, floods, hurricanes, and tornadoes. The American Red Cross also po supported major international disasters, including the, Japanese, the Japan earthquake and tsunami response while continuing its work on the 2010 Haiti earthquake response and recovery. In North Texas, the Red Cross works tirelessly through its 78 employees and more than 1,400 volunteers to support us when disaster strikes. When somebody needs life-saving blood or the comfort of a helping hand, it provides 24-hour support, members of the military, veterans, and their families, and provides training in CPR and aquatic safety and first aid. For nearly 100 years, the United States presidents have called on Americans to support the American Red Cross and, and its humanitarian mission. Our community depends on the American Red Cross, and because it is not a government agency, the Red Cross depends on the support <laughs> of the public to continue its humanitarian work. This is especially important in these challenging economic times which impact the American Red Cross <coughs> and many people in our community and across the nation. Now, therefore, I, Darrell Cockrum, County Judge of Hood County, do hereby proclaim March to, uh, 2012 as Red Cross Month. I encourage all Americans to support and, uh, this organization and its noble humanitarian mission. Uh, signed this 13th day of March 2012. And uh, I will entertain a motion to uh, accept this, or uh, uh, to pass this proclamation. No move. Second. I have a motion made by Commissioner Hetherington, seconded by Commissioner Roan. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The, the motion passed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could just speak very briefly, uh, we are indeed in a, a time of transition in the Red Cross. We recently became the North Texas region of the Red Cross, and our employees went from 178 to a to 111 for the 111 counties and I personally supervise eight of the counties in the area so I'm here in Hood County I am your representative and we'll be here whenever your firefighters or your law enforcement folks need us here for any kind of situation and and we're ready to serve you we just encourage people to become part of the the Red Cross through our volunteer programs we need all of them we can find right now thank you very much Richard
All right, the next uh, is uh, citizens' comments, and I have some up here. I have three uh, pe people that want to talk. Well, no, I have three sheets, two people. Does anybody else need to uh, speak about anything, any agenda item? If so, the sheriff has paperwork. Anyone? And if I miss you guys, Danny, I noticed you had several written out across there. Just don't let me miss them, okay? Okay. Uh, does any, um, any commissioner wish to pull anything off the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Wait, wait a minute. I think Tona wants to t address C, don't you, Tona? Yeah. Pardon? Consent agenda. Not consent only. Consent agenda. Or is that miscellaneous? Okay, never mind. Have a motion made by Commissioner Barry to approve. Uh, have Second. Seconded by Commissioner Simpson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, item number eight is, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, item number eight is business to be discussed. Consider approval of subdivision roads and plats. Lot 1641 and 1642, creating approximately seven tenths acre lot called 1641R. It's located in the primary water district in precinct number two. Uh, we do have a letter from the homeowner association acknowledging this replat. Everything on the replat uh, does follow our regulations for replatting, and staff does recommend approval. Okay, a public hearing is now open to uh, consider uh, the replat of lot 164-1R and plant, pecan plantation unit 7. Does anybody wish to make comments on this? No comments. Then the public hearing is closed. I'll entertain a motion to take appropriate action to approve the uh, replatting of lot 1641R of Pecan Plantation Unit 7. So move to accept item A under uh, entry 2. Okay, you have a motion made by Commissioner Rohn. A second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Simpson. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Of a, on the next one, Judge, uh, staff recommends that the court set a public hearing to consider and take appropriate action for the replat of 616R in Canyon Creek, number three, and unit seven. We recommend that be set for April the 10th, Commissioner's Court meeting. <coughs> April 10th? Yes, sir. So move. Second. I have a motion made by Commissioner Berry, seconded by Commissioner Hetherington, to set a public hearing to consider and take appropriate action for the replat of lot uh, 616R, Canyon Creek 3, uh, Unit 7. Um, any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Budget and finance. I'm judging commissioners. Uh, there's one budget line amendment that I would uh, suggest to you tonight. Um, during the budget last summer, we weren't sure when Judge Tuggle would be vacating the Highway 51 uh, facility. And so we budgeted $16,000 for that rent. We only had to spend $2,600. And so for this year, $13,400 remains. I would suggest that money could be moved back to the general fund to help cover the extra utility bills that we're anticipating uh, for the Justice Center. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the... Don't move. Uh, Second. Motion made by Commissioner Hetherington, seconded by Commissioner Simpson to uh, approve a line item uh, moving money out of the uh, rent for the uh, precinct for JP into the general fund. Uh, any uh, further discussion on that? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now we're down to bills. Uh, Judge and Commissioners, the total bills are revised to be $307,388.12. Um, in review, we found that there was one item for $56.68 that had been charged to a credit card, <coughs> and it ended up 
with a purchase order also. So I need to remove the $56.68 purchase order because it's already been charged to the credit card. Uh, most of the bills um, have to do with a few large items. One of them is a payment to Hood County Appraisal District for the quarterly appraisal and collection services. That's $123,992.07. To uh, attorneys and court reporters and visiting judges, uh, et cetera, that amount is $10,539.13. For jail gro groceries to Ben E. Keith, $10,767.26. To the City of Granbury for utilities, $31,089.48. To Hood County Adult Probation, $17,025. And that's to help as a subsidy for the grounds maintenance uh, for county properties. To Vulcan Construction Materials, $23,211.72 for road ops materials. Uh, there is a rather long list. I have provided the court <coughs> with payment warrants for each item on the list. I recommend them for your approval. I'd be glad to try to address any questions you might have. Move we ratify to pay the bills. Thank you. I have a motion made by Commissioner Heatherington, seconded by Commissioner Barry, to ratify paying the bills. Any further discussion? And all in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. I think now we're down to miscellaneous. Uh, Sheriff, you're up first. Consider and take appropriate action for items A, B, and C. Th these are yours. Judge, commissioners, come before you tonight um, to see if I can purchase some 30 pairs of handcuffs. Uh, these are kind of like tires and other things like that that wear out from time to time, and we need to get more in the jail for transporting prisoners to court and off to penitentiary and other different places. So uh, the request is they're fourteen dollars ninety nine cents each. Um, the bid this bid came from Gauls, and the total. It's 449.70, and then with shipping, it's 474.70. So, I asked for your approval of that, so we could buy it. Um, I guess later on this agenda, there's uh, the line coming up to talk about buying things out of supplies and all that. But um, I guess. So I don't know where we need to take this from, if it needs to come out of supplies or capital or whatever, but it's something that I, I do need to keep, keep business as usual back there in the jail. Anybody have any questions to the sheriff on this? Well, I think it's still going to be fun 55, uh, motion to approve. Motion made by Commissioner Simpson, do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Rohn to approve uh, the purchase of um, 30 pairs of handcuffs uh, uh, for $14.99 each and a total of $449.70 plus $25 shipping. Any further discussion on this? Then all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? It motion carried. Thank you, Sheriff. You want Thank you. The next thing on item B, uh, I made this request when we were talking about capital expenditures uh, a couple of months ago. And in my office, in my department, we have to qualify um, for T-close rules. And with I've got a lot of officers, and we've been using a lot of ammo that's been in place in there for quite a while. So I need to restock up. So this is kind of an expensive one. I put on the on here a price not to exceed nine thousand because I didn't have the the quote right in front of me. But this is quotes from GE and Precision Delta, two different places, state contract, and it's a smart buy. And so the grand total of everything is actually $8,378.14. And then I'm not exactly sure on the shipping. And what usually happens on the ammo, buying it at the state contract track price that we order it now, and it might be quite a few months before we get it in. So I'm really not sure what it'll be for the, the shipping, but it'll definitely be under the $9,000. And that breaks down for nine millimeter, 357, 40 caliber, 40 caliber training and duty, 
a double lot buck for the shotguns and 223 for patrol and the SWAT guys for the rifles. It's all part of doing business. Move to approve. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Hetherington, seconded by Commissioner Berry to approve this request for purchase ammunition for training uh, and duty in miscellaneous calibers uh, not to exceed $9,000. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Sheriff. One more, right? Thank you. Yeah, one more. On item C, I was incorrect on my numbers that are on the, the the agenda. It's six computer mouses for dispatch computers, and the price is four ninety eight each, not four ninety five. And then the total is twenty nine eighty eight, um, and that is from CDWG, is where that quote came from, and that was with the help of the IT department. And these are needed in dispatch. Those computers are used twenty four seven, seven days a week. I know it's a small purchase, um, but I can't take it out of supplies, so that's why I'm asking for the approval. So, why can't you take it out of supplies? I mean, is that why, now What is that? All right, do I have a motion approved. Motion made by Commissioner Hetherington. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Simpson to approve the purchase of six mouses. Is that right? Mouses? Uh, this is mice, whatever. Mice. What you mouses. Mice uh, for a total of twenty nine eighty eight. Any further discussion? Uh, then all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much, Sheriff. Thank you. Item number two is take, uh, uh, these are policy uh, items. Um, I believe Danny wanted to talk about the automated time and attendance policy. Danny, you want to come? I just want to see what the court's doing. I didn't know. Kathy uh, wanted to, to look at that too before. Do you have any things on it? I just wanted to see what the court was acting was. I, I didn't have a clue what the uh, policy was going to be. And I just, Bob, just, do you want to cover <coughs> the changes on this? that are on this. <clears throat> Basically, our full-time employees may be entitled to holiday pay if their recognized holiday occurs within the regularly scheduled work time, with the exception of dispatch, which are, are working those hours anyway. And the other change down here, it says an employee who is sick on the last day, regular work day, before and after the holiday, will be required to present a note from his or her position in order to qualify for holiday pay. Those are the only changes to the current policy. Okay. Does any, uh, I think item C, Danny, do you want to talk about that? I think Tona wants to talk about that too. Okay, Tona, do you want to address? Bob, you want to cover the, that? The, uh, <coughs> Well, going in order, uh, the federal government has new guidelines for lactation and breastfeeding, so we've got a policy that will cover that. Uh, as we have two females right now that are uh, with child. The other is the code of conduct, and the only thing that changed in the code of conduct was in the last section. It basically says the formal complaint will then be returned to the personnel director so that it can be logged and given to the appropriate elected or department head. If the complaint concerns the personnel director, it should be delivered to the Hood County judge. That's the only change to that policy. Okay. Does anybody want to make comments on that, Tony? You. What's the purpose? I can't. I'm hear. sorry. I can't. She has to go to my. No. No. What? Here, y'all. Look at it. I know. I know. It's just terrible. Uh -huh. No, I've just got the old policy, 
and it says purpose, the filing of complaints and purpose. Has that changed any from what is on the new one? No, the only thing, Judge, that changed was that section I just read. That if a complaint is filed against me, then it would be go would go directly to you. Uh, and in, and this is uh, we heard some of those complaints before that you know they didn't they couldn't go to to Bob because he was the one being complained against. So we just had an, an extra mechanism to com for to file a complaint. Okay, I thought it had changed from when any member of the public. This is our old one says just when any member of the public wishes to file an official complaint on a Hood County employee, the sequence of events should be as follows. So that's what the new policy says. It's just saying members of the public. It doesn't say anything about county employees. I don't, where, what page? That's, a, where, that's where, a different policy. No, it's code of conduct. I've got it if you want to look at it. This is the ones we just passed in September. Here, it's right here under purpose. And it says when an employee of Hood County or, or a member of the public wishes to file a complaint, it's right here. Is that the new policy or the old one? This is the one we just put in, but okay. right here you we see this to time. it, that section where if it's filed against me, then they would go to the county judge. No, I meant right here. It's right, right here. here. It's right Purpose. there it is. See? That's the new one. Okay. That's yeah. what I, yeah. that the yeah. old one doesn't say I misunderstood that. you. I'm okay. sorry. Yes. Is it the same? No. No, it's, it's changed. It changed. That's what I so it's changed from just member of the public to employee member of the public and employee of the county. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And or. Okay. Hey, does anybody have any other questions on that? Danny, you got any on that? Let's go back to the first first one. I think Kathy wanted to say something. Department emailed me the changes that she was going to make on the timekeeping system policy, I would just like for the HR director to clarify that Mary Gertis, what she put in that email, is the only thing that was changed in that, that policy. Is, that is correct, Judge. Thank you. Okay, uh, then uh, if there's no other questions or discussion on that, I'll entertain a motion to uh, to adopt, uh, approve the policy and procedures items A, B, and C, the automated time and attendance, the lactation breastfeeding policy, and the code of conduct and filing of formal complaints. So move. Second. Is that... That uh, Mike, did you make that, and and Steve. All right. I have a motion made by Commissioner Simpson and uh, seconded by Commissioner Barry to approve those three. Any further discussion? And all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. I tell you, you think you have trouble here, and I can't tell who's doing what. Thank you, State. Anyway. All right, item number three, take, uh, consider and take appropriate action regarding a resolution uh, and a letter opposing the Patient Protection and Affordability Act to be sent to Rick Perry. Uh, Commissioner Rohn, do you want to take that or you want me to? I'll read it. That's fine. Uh, it's a resolution in order to request Governor Rick Perry to call a special session to Texas Legislature. Whereas the United States Congress passed H.R. 3590, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which the President of the United States signed into law, and whereas this legislation <clears throat> is massive in nature and will force every state, municipality, local government entity, and individual in the United States of America under penalty of federal law to live out their lives under the direction of the United States Preventive Services Task Force, a committee empowered to evaluate preventive health services and decide which will be covered by health insurance plans plus hundreds of other mandates, and whereas this task force is also the only federal health agency to have explicit legal authority to consider cost as one criterion in recommending whether patients should use a medical test or a treatment, which means this volunteer group of advisors will be wielding total influence over the lives of every insured American citizen, and whereas the fastest way to stop this massive intrusion into the lives of every Texan is for the governor of Texas to call a special session of the legislature for the explicit purpose of invoking the Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution, that being the state's rights bill. 
Now therefore be it resolved by the Commissioner's Court of Hood County that the Court respectfully request that Governor Perry, as soon as legally possible, call the Texas Legislature into a special session for the purpose of passing into law a resolution invoking the Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution and removing the State of Texas, its sub-agencies, county governments, municipalities, and citizens from participation in and the burdens of and mandates of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act introduced and passed by the Commissioner's Court on this 13th day of March 2012. Does everybody understand all of that? No? You well, better. no wonder, because it's Obamacare. I mean... <laughs> you better learn to understand it. Yeah, really, it's because we're about to be knows. under it. And uh, we're just... Uh, We'll pass a resolution in our, our opposition to it and for the state of Texas to stand up in opposition to it. Which uh, the Attorney General has already done, but um, it takes a bit more formal action by the legislature than that. <clears throat> so do I have a motion to... Move. A motion made by Commissioner Simpson, seconded by Commissioner Hetherington, to uh, approve this resolution. Any forward further to, discussion? Forward it to Governor Perry. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to forward it to Governor Perry along with this letter. And it says, as an American, a Texan, and uh, a constitutional county judge, I respectfully request that a special session of the Texas legislature be called for the explicit purpose of invoking the Tenth Amendment of the United States Constitution to deny to the federal government the right to force patient protection and affordability act on the state of Texas, its sub-agencies, uh, sub county government, and municipalities. It is time for all Texans to get involved. So I am asking you, as governor of the great state of Texas, to do the same in the name of the freedom and liberty. It is with deep regret, regret that Texans at this level must get involved to protect our citizens from an ever-growing federal government. Passing the Patient Protection and Affordability Act by the United States Congress is much like a cancer slowly eating away at our liberties. Many have perished to protect these liberties only to be taken away from internal sources. Governor Perry, please act by taking a stand. When running for president, you made statements about limiting the power of the federal government. Now it is time to put these statements into action. Our Constitution provides for means for you to act. Patrick Henry asked questions in his famous speech, what is so precious that to be purchased by the chains of slavery? Right now, the American people seem to be enslaved by the federal dollars flowing from Washington. Do not let these dollars slave the state of Texas. Please take a stand for our freedom. And I'm going to send that along with the resolution. Anybody have any questions on that? Vote. All right, then I call for question. Everybody approve? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Cons uh, this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Steve. All right, uh, consider and take appropriate action on request from tax assessor collector. Consider uh, request from string fellows to waive the liquor permit fee and take appropriate action. Good evening, Judge and Commissioners. Um, I brought these before you tonight just on behalf of these um, customers. Uh, string fellows uh, and Hanks on the Square recently closed, and right before they closed, they renewed their TABC licenses uh, for liquor. And um, they were in business, I think both of them, less than two months. And we billed them for the whole two-year renewal period because we bill the way TABC bills. So when they renew with TABC, we got the notice a few mo a month or month and a half later or something like that. Once TABC processed that, I invoiced these customers for these two-year licenses. And then right after that or right about that same time in the Stringfellows case, I think it was within a week or so, they actually closed their business. So these invoices were for two years and they were actually in operation less than two months of that time period. So I just uh, came on their behalf uh, based on their request uh, to ask you to waive those fees. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to, con uh, to waive the liquor permit fee uh, for string fellas. So move. Motion made by Commissioner Rohn. I have a second. Second seconded by Commissioner Hetherington. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next one. 
uh, nobody's home. Uh, Hanks on the Square. Uh, same situation as Stringfellows. Uh, they renewed their license or permit with TABC. Um, we got, let's see, let me make sure what that renewal date was here. I believe that was um, October. They renewed the permit in October with TABC. Uh, became effective on 10 19 of 2011 was set to expire 10-18-2013. Uh, we received the card from TABC showing that that permit had been renewed and issued um, on 12-13, so that's when we invoiced the two years, um, and then they closed their business December 31st, so that's the same, same situation. Month. By the time that we actually received it and invoiced them, you know, they were in the process of closing the business, so this is the same exact situation. Yeah. I have a motion to waive this liquor fee. Don't move. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Simpson, seconded by Commissioner Rohn, uh, to waive the uh, liquor permit fee for nobody's home, Hanks, um, on the square. Any further discussion? And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure they appreciate that. All right, consider and take appropriate action on request from purchasing. Uh, consider and take appropriate action to discuss and approve procedures on a policy for the departments to request items. I believe this yours, uh, Nelda? Okay, do you want to address this? But um, there are questions raised now because they don't have the money they used to for equipment. I realize the mouse that we bought for the sheriff or are buying for the sheriff normally might have come out of supply, but when you think about it in the realm of it's a piece of equipment. So I, I need some direction on what you want me to put into supply or make a policy a procedure my suggestion is that and I don't know that this can be done would have to uh, confer with Stan can we make the 330 line a supply equipment line can it be phrased that way that would eliminate a lot of the questions on where and it would keep them from from having to bring to court these smaller items that really don't fit into a category then we, we have furniture also, like office chairs, things like In fact, I have one office chair right here tonight to talk about. They, they are willing to take it out of their budget money. But at the same time, I need direction on whether that's allowed or not. By creating another account, are we simply adding back in what we took out in the supply line? Would, would, it, would it not be... Would it not make more sense, and I'm asking because I don't know, would it not make more sense to give you uh, authority up to a certain amount to process these without having to create uh, an entirely new budget line for them? Sure. Long, and you can verify if it's coming out of their budget, et cetera, and if the money's there. Right. I, I mean, I would opt to give that, uh, give that authority back to you. I mean, I think that's why, that's why you're there. Okay. I, I agree with you, and I would I would love for that to happen. Like I said, I just need some direction on yeah. on what was wanted of me. Yeah, because it, to, to me, it's foolish to have to have someone with the importance of the job Roger has come to us with a twenty nine dollar right. request. That should be able to be handled internally. Um, you know, I mean, if if we don't have twenty nine dollars in the county, that's a different issue. But if that money's there and Stan has can say yay or nay, it's there in the budget, et cetera, then you folks ought to be able to decide that. That's I think that's why why we have you. What kind of a dollar amount would you like to see? What kind of a dollar amount do you think you need to eliminate the problem? I think your run of the mill things a few hundred dollars. I think anything over that with the budget the way it is, you might want to question it. Do what, you really what, need like two fifty? 250 is fine. Stan, you got any comments on that? Uh, thank you, Judge and Commissioners. Um, of course, the court sets the budget, and you can set that budget at any level of detail that you choose. We're always glad to have your direction 
on what your expectations are for the budget. Once the budget is adopted, uh, the auditor and the county judge have a very strict duty under the law to make sure that purchases are made in strict compliance with that budget. It is a lawful document. Now, the purchasing agent is an independent purchasing agent and has a duty that if there's not a budget line for a particular purchase, she's not allowed to approve or to make that purchase. So I can see the quandary that she finds herself in. I, I think your recommendation of setting a dollar amount of $250 is an excellent idea. Um, when I'm looking at expenditures, I, I look first of all to see if it's an unlawful expenditure. I have the authority not to approve an expenditure, but that's a very high level of, uh, of test. Um, I have to say, is it unlawful? I'm, I'm not allowed to second guess the department head's judgment. If it's lawful, uh, you know, I, I really need to back off and not try uh, to interfere. Uh, the other question is, has the court given me a specific directive and would this purchase violate any particular directive that the court has given me? For example, in the last couple of years of the budget year, uh, you don't want the expenditures to exceed one twelfth of the annual budget. Right. And so we've got an additional test during that time. When it comes to a computer mouse, I have no problem at all saying it could be supplies, it could be repairs and maintenance. That's not unlawful. Almost you haven't right. given me any direction that tells me it would be a violation of county policy. Um, a computer mouse has almost a, become a consumable. Right. And, and if you've got a broken task chair that's going to cost 50 bucks, uh, I think that is not an abuse <clears throat> to replace a chair uh, out of supplies or out of repairs and maintenance. Uh, of course, somebody could try to bend the rules so far that it becomes abusive, and I think that's where we need to be able to exercise our judgment and, and have the purchasing agent, the auditor, and the county judge make a recommendation. And of course, any line item that's in there at any time is subject to objection from any member of the court. So there's always an opportunity to catch those kind of things uh, that you might have an objection to. So uh, I wholeheartedly agree with the proposal well, uh, to set that limit. Set that limit at 250. Yeah, uh, it, it that can't, that? But it can't be steadfast because a supply line that Roger has, a supply line that somebody has that has one or two employees, uh, $250 may be a big part of their budget. So it's going to have to be on a case by case basis with Nelda because. Roger's supply line may be $25,000, and somebody with one employee may have a supply line of $500. So you just let them eat up half their budget with a chair. Well, Stan said that one twelfth will eat that up. I mean, that will take care of that, though. Uh, yeah, but that's not till we put that in place. Yeah. We don't implement one twelfth till certain times of the year, but... Uh, Last three months. She needs to have the leeway to buy mou mouses and... Yeah. Right. folders and whatever else but uh, you still can't just it's not a steadfast rule because she may have to come back somebody may not have money for a chair but do you want to set it at uh, one twelfth of the supply line well then she will be back every month or every meeting with because it'll go that, over it that's hard that's if it hard exceeds one twelfth I, I think the I think the 250 will eliminate a lot of the cases, Steve, and if there's exceptions, then she needs to bring it back to us, I guess. Well, I do have a question about repairs, because there were some, I think it was some radio repairs that needed to be done. They didn't have a budget line for it. They wanted to take that out of supply. Is that allowed? Or do we need to bring that back to court? I think it needs to be brought to court, because it, uh, that's a repair and maintenance thing. It's not supplies. Yeah. Right. That's right. That's, that's, yeah, that's the, reason, the reason we got what we got is because we didn't have extra money just to leave their supply line in place and leave it inflated. It's not, I mean, so if anybody was wanting to buy something out of their own supply line, we should commend them instead of penalizing them. I 
agree. Because they're trying to work within their budget of what we've already given them, as Stan said. If you, I mean, bringing it back to Fund 55 is defeating the purpose unless it's in our limit $500 where we have to, we actually tag everything at 500, Nelda? No. We don't put the tags on at 500? I don't think so. Where do you put tags on? What limit? I honestly don't know. You don't know? I don't know. For each item that's, a, that's an inventoried item? We aren't even tagging desk or anything anymore. But you do file cabinets, computers, and stuff like that, right? We do the computers because they're electronic. But we don't do file cabinets and all that stuff anymore. <clears throat> It's it's just noted in each department that they have so many of them. On the inventory. Yes. She needs the leeway to work with. If, if somebody's wanting to buy it out of their budget, she needs the leeway to be able to let them buy it out of that budget. I think I think the two hundred and fifty dollars, and and if if it goes over, it, it, I don't you know if somebody has a five hundred dollar supply line, you know. So let them have the option if they have a five hundred dollar supply line, let them have the option to come to court and ask for fund fifty five. Right. You want to make that a motion? You understand that she can, she can guide him in that in that manner as well. Yeah, Danny, do you want to speak on this also? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, what we're trying to do, of course, is uh, when we went through the budget for the, all of you that weren't here during the budget, we this was a really really tight budget. To, uh, our appraisals went way down, so the money that we had coming in went down. Our, a bunch of our expenses went up, and we, we had to eliminate a million something dollars, about a million out of the, out of the budget, right, Stan? And cut, cutting different line items. And one of the things that we cut was uh, equipment and uh, sm small equipment uh, and, uh, for, the, um, for each department. And we were going to buy that out of Fund 55. And uh, now, though, since all all of those budgets were cut, then people don't have anywhere to get to purchase smaller things. And that's what we're trying to solve now. All right? And in the process of solving it, I mean, I, I think we all believe, you know, we, we hire and, and elect and get people we can trust to run their business. So I don't think all that detail needs to come to us. That has to be... 90% uh, of it, whatever that limit has to be to cover 90% of those exceptions, can be handled internally by you folks. And, uh, don't you guys agree? That's what I think. Okay. Yeah. Hey, do I, uh, does somebody want to make a motion then? And I'll also move that we set the limit at 250 and and keep it open to consideration for review. All right. Have a motion made by Commissioner Ron to set the uh, limit at $250. And uh, do I hear a second? Second. second? By Commissioner Simpson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Consider and take appropriate action to discuss and consider pro uh, approving special items uh, requested by departments that are not considered. Is that the same thing? Well, it, it involves all of it. And since you've passed this resolution at 250, I don't even need to talk about the one I have. Okay, moving on. Item six. Consider and take appropriate action regarding. Sorry. Oh, what was that? Oh, I thought we were being attacked or something. I don't know. Burp. <laughs> Consider and take appropriate action uh, regarding a inst installing a hiring freeze. Commissioner Precinct 1. Well, you just discussed the budget, is still the budget, and the economy has not changed, and we've not had a windfall of. Uh, Income. Of, of income. So in looking forward to the, the upcoming budget, uh, I would make a motion to install the hiring freeze. And what the hiring freeze does, in effect, is when the budget is being done and we're trying to see where we're going with this thing, if there's a hiring freeze in effect and if there is a vacancy, it could, in effect, in the long run, save positions at the end. Um, if the budget, if we don't do this and the budget is a bad budget, which we feel it's going to be, and it requires laying off employees, then there's no option but to lay off employees. If you've got a hiring freeze in effect three or four months out ahead of the budget, 
and you create positions by attrition and hold those positions, it allows spaces for employees to go that may very well have otherwise been laid off. So it's a protective mechanism. We may get into budget and realize we don't have to do that, but I think as a, um, a calculated risk factor that we need to consider uh, hiring freeze from now until we get some good numbers on the budget. When do you want, uh, what date do you want to, any requisition coming in from the department after what? Pick a day. I mean, it, it's just something that needs to be in place. Yeah. I think, Tony, don't you have a, a pending? <coughs> How quickly can you do that? Yeah, but did we keep anybody from hiring anybody last year? No. No, we didn't. No, maybe one, maybe one. Did we, Tona? Did, I mean, did we keep you from hiring somebody last year, or did you just leave it open because of the budget? Yeah, she gave one back. I think Mary Burnett gave one back, too, so thank you all both. We don't want to damage the workings of any department doing this, though. And the last, you know. there's, there's two departments that fixing to have medical issues, okay, that I know of. And you can't talk about it for HIPAA, but there are going to be people that they're going to be shorthanded. So you're going to have to be able to have leeway to let them hire people to continue doing day-to-day -day operations. Yeah, what we've done in the past is safety-sensitive positions. Uh, oh, but that's not, that's not the case. I mean, one's going to be maintenance and one's going to be the district clerk. Well, that's true. Things, things happen, and in the last hiring freeze, uh, we did grant variances, if you will. Uh, I believe the patrols, the sheriff patrol was Correct. exempt from this. Correct. About June. Somewhere in June, or June, July, maybe. <laughs> The problem that we run into is if we lay somebody off, we have to pay 60% of their salary because of uh, unemployment benefits. It's about what it works out to is what Kathy or Bob told me or sent the email. So that's one reason you don't want to lay anybody off. It's a 60% hit to the budget. I, I still think you have to have leeway if you're going to put this hiring freeze in place. I mean, there's, there's going to be a variance that has to be addressed at every court on certain issues. Right. So let's, let's talk April 1st effective April 1st and we'll go quarter by quarter sure well I've got a very small department we've got two full-time employees one part-time if I lose one full-time employee I've cut my workforce basically in half and it's, it would be almost impossible to complete that job without then having to pay the other person overtime on an extended period of time which would wear her out if you know if she had to work extended periods over time I, I was just looking for leeway in a situation like that where our department is so small that it's almost mandatory that we have that many personnel to get the job done we've got that much business in the office in a situation like that are we, are we truly we're not negatively impacting an existing budget in any fashion no what we are doing is protecting from the potential for growth but, but I don't see why you would be kept from replacing a person you lose when that budget is already there. Well, that was, that was my concern, because when you have a hiring freeze, I understand a hiring freeze is a hiring freeze. You can't hire anyone. That's correct. You know, I, I think one of the things that, that, like Mike is thinking about, is we just got hit with a $90,000 uh, increase in our electric bill for the Justice Center was 30,000 now it's 120,000 we weren't so when we get down into the last few months of the year so that money's got to come from somewhere or, or shut down the justice center which I don't think is an option but so that, that I think that's what Mike is one of the things he's thinking about mm -hmm. so but we don't we're not going to damage anybody's ability 
to do their job. That that was my concern because it would it would adversely affect the performance in this in our office if we lost half of our personnel. And so that that was my concern. If we lose, say, if one person got sick and had to quit, then c would I be able to hire another person to replace them? Yes, you had the option for the variance or to come to court and talk about it. Yes, that's okay. what we were just talking about. Okay, I, I just think, wanted I to make sure, and because. It, it's almost mandatory that we have that, that many personnel in the office to get the job done. That's what my concern was. Thanks, gentlemen. Okay, thank you, Danny. Uh, I have a motion made by Commissioner Simpson to uh, implement uh, in stating a firing, hiring freeze uh, April the 1st. Uh, any Second. With, he said with quarterly review. With so quarterly review. With court review. And seconded by Commissioner Hetherington. Any further discussion? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, consider and take appropriate action regarding panic buttons for Hood County Courthouse. What has happened is, is that the, there are a number, we have money taken in in uh, Danny's office here. And uh, there is no security, uh, you know, we don't, there's no, uh, what do you call those, x-ray machines, what do you call those things? Uh, Metal detectors. Metal detectors on the, any doors, they're all open. And so there's no, no way to uh, secure. And uh, Danny uh, has requested, and I agree with, and I think the rest of the commissioners do too, that there needs to be something done on that. And we have two bids I, uh, on that. One is for like 9,500, and the other is for about 5,000. The, the one, the 9,000 is, I mean, is 9,500 is one like it's down at the um, down at the Justice Center where you push a button it immediately goes to um, to the uh, go, goes over the radio and it's and so dispatch is immediate right and, and really I think that's the one that's needed rather than buying uh, then going to um, the 911 does the 9500 get the judge's office and the constable's office State contract or wireless? Okay. Is it wireless? Okay. If we can, if we have some more offices come in the building, can they be added to it without a lot of expense? Yes, sir. And I'll entertain a motion to approve those panic buttons. No move. A Second. motion made by Commissioner Hetherington. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Simpson. Um, any further discussion? Yes, Judge, you're not supposed to say on TV that we have no security in this building. Uh, Don't do that. We will have as soon as this is installed. Okay. <laughs> okay, be careful tomorrow. All right. So uh, is there any further discussion on this? Then all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Motion carried. Addendums, consider and take appropriate action. I believe this is yours, Sheriff. It's the COPS program. Judge and commissioners, um, this is a grant that I've applied for in the past. And I know we passed on that other agenda item, but I did give up a clerk that I've never been able to rehire. And then I am paying out a commissary reimbursement for one of my clerks. So I'm trying to do my part and help the best I can with the county. But last year I put in for the COPS grant, uh, this is a federal grant. This year I got notice that it is opened up until uh, the deadline is March 22nd. And so I just wanted to bring it before the court to ask your opinion on whether I should or could. Uh, this year's grant, um, last year they paid three years 100% and then the fourth year they cut it back to 25%. This year they changed that up and it's 75% for three years. And then the, you gotta keep them for the fourth year. But there is a clause in here that under a hardship, agencies will have the opportunity during the application update to re request a waiver of local match grant or match re requirement based on document 
severe financial dis distress. So I could possibly get this for 100% for those three years, but the way they're officially putting it out is 75%, so that would basically be $11,000 on, with the benefit package for a patrol deputy, it's gonna be about $44,000 uh, for a total person. So we'd pay about $11,000 per year per deputy if I was able to receive this grant. And then also the another clause in there is I have to hire a military veteran that has served since September 11, 2001. I don't have a problem in the world with that. I've got a couple people like that that I've hired already. So that's the stipulations. I've got until March 22nd, and I have to reply back to these, these people one way or another, whether I do or whether I don't. Um, I know I've heard tonight again about the shape the county's in financially, but this is an opportunity for the next uh, couple of years, three years, that would pay for the better part of a, an officer, hopefully 100%. So I would request uh, to do this grant for two officers. Just open it up for discussion. And this will still be decided. I mean, you might not get them or you may get them. Is that correct? It still has to be decided. Yeah, it's undecided that if I would get it or not, um, it's got to be turned in. Uh, they send a letter that um, says, sorry, you didn't get it last year, but you're in the running still for this year. So it narrows down the the scope of it, I don't know how many people are in the running, including us, if we would file, but it's still not a guaranteed thing that we'd get it. But I, I have to file for it before I know. The reason I'm asking is when do you know when you would get this? So we're I mean, in budget times in July, that's what I'm asking. Well, I'm not sure. I've, I've read over this um, and all the different uh, parts to this and, and different information, different um, questions that they have. I haven't been able to figure out exactly when they're going to put this out. So I, I, I read it too, Roger, and it looks like, I, I, if I had to guess, uh, Steve, I'd say September. That's kind of what I was thinking. A lot of them are like the end of September, in, in September, so uh, about the time when the, just before the new budget starts, they would be announcing that. But worst case, worst case, under the 75% level, this would cost us um, about, about uh, with benefits, about 33 percent, am I correct? About 33 percent of what a normal full-time deputy employee would cost um, for the next three years times two. That would be with the new money required, if you will. Yeah, I'm not that great at math, but yeah, about 11,000. I'm not either, that's why I said <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve. About $22,000 for two people, about 11,000 per person. Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, Roger, they've uh, motioned to approve and seconded, so I'd stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you very much, Sheriff. Thank you. All right, next item is consider and take appropriate action regarding train proposal for a unit at the Justice Center. Commissioner Precinct 4. This is Cotton. He has to put it on the agenda. It'll be a fun 55 item if we do it. Judge, Commissioners, uh, we've got another one of. Uh, Another one of those units, uh, uh, rooftop units on the Justice Center. This unit has already had repairs to a major component in it, and it's it's uh, now it wants another compressor. We've already spent money on this unit, and it it's failed again. Uh, it's one of those carrier units that we've uh, already had to replace a couple of them. They're uh, I don't know whether it's bad design or just bad components, but they just don't seem to last. And so I have a proposal from Train to uh, to replace that unit, uh, all total with the uh, with the crane service to get the old one off, the new one on, to put the new. Uh, they have to reconfigure the curb to make the new unit fit the hole that's already in the roof, and it's twelve thousand eight hundred sixty-six dollars and six cents. Now, is this this is new technology? We're not replacing it with the same kind of unit that came. No, out. no. This the old unit is is one of the small. Carrier units. Uh, this is a this is a new train unit, uh, much like the one that we put on the jury room 
back there uh, behind county court at law. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, uh, purchase the, uh, the new unit uh, from train from $12,866.06. Second. I have a motion made by Thought you made it. By the county judge, seconded by Commissioner Barry. Any further discussion? And you're going to start on that now, Cotton, so it's done before June, correct? I mean, Sorry. you're going to have that done before it gets hot, before June. Yes, It may, we may need it tomorrow. Yes, sir. All right. Um, have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. It is uh, now 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, and we are adjourned. <laughs>